So, Deborah, I want to thank you for taking time out to do the Art of Fearlessly Doing Business interview. Thank you. Tell everybody who you are and uh, what your business is. My name is Deborah Bateman, and my business is Deborah Bateman LLC, which is really a coaching company. Um, I also have speeches, and I'm also an author, but more than anything, um, my why is really driven from a standpoint of helping people recognize who they are and then really living their authentic self. And that's what my business is about, helping you identify, recognize it, cultivate it, and absolutely be it. So what was the first big, um, well, the first question is, actually, let me back up a little bit, is why did you start the business? I mean, you've, you've been a business person for many years and very active in the community, the vice chairman of um, the National Bank of Arizona. Am I saying that right? Mm -hmm. It sounded like it's coming out funny. Um, uh, tell us a little bit about, you know, why you decided to take this leap into your own LLC. You know, I took this leap into this business because I had an epiphany, an experience, a self-awareness moment in which I caught myself living a life in which I was trying to please others. And it was so profound for me and made such a difference that when I went and found the answers within of really who I was, what my passions were, what I wanted to do, um, I felt that it would make a difference for others because as I looked around, I see people that aren't in touch with their authentic selves. And so it, whether it's a gift that I have or whether it's something that I just feel so passionately compelled to share, I want people to be able to live, live the best life that they possibly can. And I think that is only possible when they live that authentic life. So what was the first big fear that you had to overcome to get started? Because there's always one little nagging, hmm, maybe. I, I think the biggest fear to overcome to, to to kind of make a transition was I had a very successful and lucrative career in banking and had really reached the um, heights of my industry and it was to kind of put that aside and the known paycheck and the known benefits and everything from there and take a leap and follow my heart and do something that I felt that I was compelled or quite honestly born to do. And had it been kind of like on your list of to-dos for a while, or was it just like a one day you woke up and said, that's it, i got to do it? You know, I think it was, it was one of those things. I've, I've always enjoyed being an entrepreneur. During my, my, my banking career, I had an eight-year span in which I was an entrepreneur and provided consulting and support services to financial institutions. So I'd been there, done that. And so I had experienced... Um, I guess that initial fear of leaving a paycheck and going and starting, you know, my own business, which ended up being much more successful than what my day job was. And but then because of lifestyle um, priorities, I actually went back into banking. You know what? I think it was kind of a combination of the universe working together and bringing it all at one. Because while I woke up one day and said, this is what I want to do. I know I can do it. I know I can make a difference and I know I can be successful. The path that I had been walking or leading really allowed me and enabled me to do this. It wasn't like I had to shut down what I was doing. I had mentored and developed people that could take my place. And so it wasn't like leaving something undone. It was a way in which I could gracefully leave because whether or not I had overtly planned it or intuitively planned it, I was able to make a very graceful exit and yet at the same time jump in both feet first. So it was like a natural progression. It was a natural That's progression. That's an awesome way to get started. Yeah. And so what would you say um, your first big bump was? You know, that, you know, you oh, know the first big bump was even though I'd been an entrepreneur during the 80s um, and it set up the books, done the license and everything else, going into business um, in 2014 really encompassed a whole new element and that was the social media. Right. And so it was really getting myself in tune with being able to leverage social media, market myself on social media, tell my story on social media. 
And while that may be natural to some people for my generation, it was an effort. It was something I had to learn to do. I had to bring in people to help me. So from a, from a 1980s to 2014, there was a huge difference the technology. in setting up a business. Absolutely. Well, I commend you for embracing technology because um, I have interviewed, I think you're the 30th person, and uh, many of you are uh, in the same age category or generation. And I've also invited several of you who are in the same generation who've been unable to make the leap into the social media technology piece and the transparency that comes with doing an impromptu interview like this and just kind of letting yourself out there. So congratulations on making that leap. No, You've been it was successful. something, you know, I mean, it is, it's interesting because, I mean, the difference now is for the same effort, you can decide to be local. Or with the exact same effort, you can be national, you can be international. So yeah. it, it puts a whole different strategic aspect. Oh, it, on it levels the playing field completely. It absolutely does. So, what would you say the biggest fear is now? You know, you've gotten started. You're you're three years into this. You're about ready to make a giant transition and, and do some of your work from from the field, literally in your RV. Absolutely. Uh, what would you say the biggest fear is that you're dealing with now or concern? The biggest fear that I have is dealing with probably one of my weaknesses, and that is the inclination to overcommit. <laughs> <laughs> and I, when I see something and I recognize that I can create value, I always want to say yes. And I always want to can do. And so while I'm really using this in my life to kind of help balance my life and give myself some more social time or time with my family, I also need this in my life because it makes me whole, it adds value to me, but I need to learn and practice having it not own me, overwhelm me, take up all my time. And that's a huge change from being, you know, an upper level executive, very successful in the banking industry where workaholism is an asset. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So what would you tell other people? And I think even, you know, this is not a gender specific interview, but one of the things I've discovered over these interviews is that there's less women for me to interview than men. It's just the nature of the beast, right? There's lots of successful women out there. Um, but there's been less women in the in the crew. So what would you tell people generally, but specifically women, about being fearless? You know what? It's about being authentic. And I think when you're authentic, you know who you are, you know what you are. I think the fearless just kind of comes right with it. When you're trying to please others or you're listening to others and they're imposing their values on you, they're the ones that are putting those doubts on you. When you're in touch with yourself, your strengths, you understand your weaknesses and you know the difference that you can make and you know why you are here, you are fearless. You are empowered and you are fearless. See, it's just natural. It's a natural progression, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Authenticity leads to fearlessness. And you I have found that to be true, too. Well, Deborah, I really appreciate your time today. I look forward to seeing you on May 5th at the um, Desk Hub at the opening. Absolutely. And uh, I hope you have a fantastic day. And I look forward to seeing what happens when we see each other again in October or November. It'll be a new me, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank you.